Hey guys, I'm here today to talk about the books I'm most excited about that are coming out in April, May and June. I've got 23 books, so I'm not going to talk much about each of these, so do please go look into them yourself if you like the sound of them, so you can find out more about the plot. 20 of these are UK release dates, and 3 of them are US release dates, and that's because um, they haven't got UK release dates yet, and I can't wait. So, I'm going to start from the start. I have quite a few that have been sent very kindly from the publishers in like advanced reader copies so it's not completely what they'll look like at the end but somewhat and the first few are all being published on April the 4th which is an amazing new release day. So firstly we have Things in Jars by Jess Kidd. I read The Hoarder last year by this author and really enjoyed it and I've heard really high um, ratings for her other book which is called Himself. This I was shocked when I heard what it was about because it's actually um, a Victorian sort of literary uh, thriller mystery and I wasn't expecting her to go historical but actually I think she could do a really good job of it because she has um, a perfect blend between humour and warmth which I think could work really well in this sort of era. So this follows a female detective who's investigating a case to do with children and bodies. It sounds a bit gruesome there's perhaps going to be some sort of ghostly and um, supernatural element because that's what Jess Kidd tends to do in her novels so I'm intrigued by this one. The next one I'm currently reading and I'm absolutely loving it. I'm going to stop myself from rambling about this for ages because I'm just in love with it and like adoring it and that is Black Car Burning by Helen Mort. This is her first novel, she's previously had two poetry collections out and by god you can tell she's a poet, she writes beautifully. This is set in Sheffield, which is a city in the north of England. There is a severe lack of books um, that are set anywhere other than London in England, but particularly that are set in um, northern towns and cities. Um, so that was one thing that really drew me to it. This follows four working class characters who um, are all linked some way by sort of extreme rock climbing and also um, they're in sort of open bisexual or lesbian relationships with one another so there's lots of these characters sort of orbiting one another and they all feel really lonely whilst not alone. It's beautiful, I highly recommend it, I think it could be one of my favourite books of the year, we shall see. The next one is The Fire Starters by Jan and Carson. So I've wanted to read a Jan Carson book for um, sort of over a year, she's got quite a few books out. I'm not quite sure what this is about in all honesty, it says it's about two fathers um, who are trying to look after their children and then some weird stuff happens to the city involving a fire, um, it borders on sort of magic and fantasy and it's about what these two fathers will do um, to protect their children. But there's quotes on the back by um, people like Amy Bender who writes really freaking weird short stories and novels so I get the feeling this is going to be pretty wacky and I'm like down for the ride, I'm just very interested to see where this goes so there's that one. The next one is Island Song by Madeline Bunting. So I previously bought her book, which is a non-fiction book about the Hebridean Islands um, and still really want to read it, haven't yet. Um, and I had no idea she had a novel coming out until this arrived in the post and I was so excited. Um, so this is set on the island of Guernsey and it's set on the island in 1940. Um, and this is about following Helene, her husband is enlisted into the army um, and she is left on the island um, and this follows um, all the people who are left on the island, um, their relationships, I think there might be some affairs we follow and um, I think, I guess from what I know of this author, there's going to be a real focus on um, writing about the natural world and um, the weather and the sort of landscape. And as I said in a previous video, I don't enjoy um, war novels that are set in the sort of moment of the action like on the battlefields but I very much enjoy war novels which are focused on the people left behind and how it affects sort of everyday home life and I think this will be that sort of novel and I hope it will be beautifully written. So the next one is a bit of a wacky sounding one and that's Signet by Susan Butler. So I'm going to read you a bit of this because I'm not going to be able to describe it. The kid doesn't know where her parents are. They left with a promise to come back months ago and now their 17 year old daughter is stranded on Swan Island. Swan isn't just any island, it is home to an eccentric age-old separatist community who have shunned life on the mainland for a haven which is rapidly sinking into the ocean. The kids' arrival threatens to burst the idyllic bubble that the elderly residents have so carefully constructed, an unwelcome reminder of the life they left behind and the one that they want rid of. So it's on an island, it follows a young girl, it has sort of this cultish type of community, 
all those things sound amazing and it sounds like it could have some environmental commentary which I love and adore so very excited about that one. The next one comes on April the 11th and it's called It's Gone Dark Over Bill's Mother's House and it's by Lisa Blower. It's a short story collection and it says all these stories focus on the matriarchs of the family which I love. It sounds like these are going to be really sort of working class British stories um, set in all different places I think perhaps in the north as well and um, just all the um, reviews that are written for this one makes it sound like something I could really love. I don't know anything about this author but this is one that I'm going to try and get hold of. The next one comes out on April the 11th and that is From the Wreck by Jane Rawson. Now lots of us probably heard about this one over on Simon's channel because he read it in the Australian edition last year and it's since been picked up by Picador. This is a historical novel um, that follows a man who survives a shipwreck um, and this creature that I think is in the body of a horse is on the ship and the horse becomes a woman. I think, I'm not quite sure, but it sounds a bit wacky, it's supposed to be really beautiful and I have no idea what I'm getting myself in for, I'm excited nonetheless. So the next one is also published on the 18th and I'm going to be honest, it's the title that originally pulled me into this one, it's called To Leave With The Reindeer and it's written by Olivia Rosenthal and translated from the French by Sophie Lewis. So this is a novel which sounds like it might have lots of non-fiction elements, it's about a woman's exploration into the link that we have with other animals and she looks at all sorts of things like the way we've domesticated certain animals, the way we butcher others, um, the way we put some in cages and it's about her um, sort of deep dive into those things. It sounds like the sort of novel I could just fall in love with. The next one I'm sure loads of us have on our list and that's The Girl Aquarium by the one and only Jen Campbell and that's being published on the 25th of April. It's Jen's first full-length poetry collection and I read and adored her previous um, poetry which was published in a pamphlet. I'm not one for poetry, I don't read a lot of it, I feel like I don't understand it but I feel like I really understand Jen poetry, really enjoy it. I don't know if that's because I know her but all the things that Jen enjoys as like themes and um, the types of sort of language she enjoys in novels are all the things that I enjoy so when she writes poetry I love it and I'm very excited for this one and it has a beautiful cover. So the next one comes out on the 2nd of May and it's Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. So I'm not quite sure if this is being marketed as a novel or a short story collection because it says brace yourselves because this sounds amazing. This follows 12 black women living in Britain and it follows their stories across all different parts of Britain through the ages. So as an example it says here um, Newcastle 1905 we follow 10 year old Grace, Cornwall 1953 we follow Winsome who's a young bride from Barbados, um, Oxford 2008 we follow Carol who's rejecting her cultural background so on so forth. It sounds amazing so I'm not quite sure if these are going to be just completely separate stories or if they'll be um, you know several chapters following each character and they'll like all be blended into one another. Either way I love the sound of it and I cannot wait to read this one. I think it's quite chunky so that's always exciting. There's another book being published on the 2nd of May that I'm also really excited for and it's A Stranger City by Linda Grant. I read The Dark Circle, was it last year or the year before by Linda Grant and really enjoyed it and I really love the sound of this one too although it sounds quite different. So this says when a dead body is found in the Thames caught in the chains of HMS Belfast it begins a search for a missing woman and confirms a sense that in London a person become invisible once outside their community. So it follows a policeman, a documentary filmmaker and an Irish nurse and how they respond to this death and how it affects their lives. I love novels that have several characters that are all linked by this one thing. I really enjoyed her tone in The Dark Circle and I'm really interested to see how she'll deal with that in a contemporary novel. So it's sort of the, the flip of um, Just Kid. With Just Kid I'm excited to see how she'll write historical. With Linda Grant I'm excited to see how she'll write contemporary. So this next one comes out on the 9th of May and I'm so excited for this one, it sounds phenomenal. And that is What Red Was by Rosie Price. Now the publishers are trying to sell this as like the next normal people. If I was a publisher I'd do that too because you're going to make quite a bit of money through sales. However I do really like the sound of this one. So this follows two characters, um, a boy and a girl who go for a university together and I believe they're in a relationship and the girl really struggles with meeting the boy's family because I think they're very upper class and she comes from a different world and then when they finish university um, something happens to her in their apartment which I think is going to be some sort of sexual assault and it says 
What Red Was explores the effects of trauma on mind and body, the tyrannies of memory, the sacrifices involved in staying silent, the courage of a young woman in speaking out, and when Kate does, this question, whose story is it now? So I think that sounds like it could be amazing. And I read the first couple of pages when it came through and I loved the author's voice. So I'm hoping this could be another book of the year, but we shall see. The next one comes out on May the 14th. And this is the first one I'm gonna mention that's a US publication. And that's because it's by Karen Russell. It's called Orange World. It's a new short story collection. I don't even need to tell you what it's about because to be honest, I haven't checked. It's Karen Russell, it's a short story collection. She's absolutely freaking phenomenal. She's not for everyone. She writes in really <laughs> lyrical prose, very weird, um, yeah, very bizarre and sort of fabulous and, and magical. Lots of allusions to um, the natural world and animals and um, sort of children coming of age. I love her short story collections and I was so excited when I saw that this is being published. But I don't think it has a UK release date yet and I can't wait, so I will be picking it up in May. The next one comes out on the 16th of May and that's Lowborn, Growing Up, Getting Away and Returning to Britain's Poorest Towns by Kerry Hudson. This is another one of those books, as with the previous two, that I feel could be one of my favourite books of the year. So this is a non-fiction book that sort of blends journalism with memoir. So Kerry Hudson is a novelist and she grew up in an incredibly impoverished area and she moved around a lot and had a real um, struggle throughout her childhood. And it's her now sort of looking back in a place of um, somewhat privilege compared to the childhood she had and going back to these areas and seeing what it really means to be working class in these areas. And I guess she's analysing how much of it is down to the place you're from uh, compared to the person you are, um, how much you can break out of those places. Um, and when I read the first few pages, it it sounds really, how do I word this? Like it, it does feel like a memoir because it feels very connected to Kerry Hudson. Um, she sounds like she's telling her story. Um, and I like that because I like when someone isn't, you know, writing a non-fiction book about something they know, know nothing about. It's very clear that she knows a lot about this and is very close to it. So I'm hoping to love this. Um, I'm very much interested in reading about working class um, struggles in England and always want to hear more from um, those voices so can't wait for this one. Oops I accidentally missed one that comes out on May the 7th and I don't know how because I'm also very excited for this one. So this is also published in the US by um, an indie press and it's called An Archive of Alternate Endings by Lindsay Dragers. So I read her first novel which was called The Lost Daughter Collective which I really loved and never reviewed because I didn't know how the hell to talk about it. It was incredibly bizarre, incredibly layered. I really enjoyed it, but it was very complicated. So I definitely need to reread it. This sounds like it'll be much of the same. So I'm just gonna read you this bit because this is enough to make me wanna read it. Tracking the evolution of Hansel and Gretel at 75 year intervals that correspond with Earth's visit by Halley's Comet, the archive of alternate endings explores how stories are disseminated and shared, edited and censored, voiced and left untold. And that, sounds quite similar to what she was exploring in her previous novel, obviously with a, with a different angle. And the previous novel focused on lots of fathers and their daughters, and lots of those daughters were called Alice, and lots of them had gone into places called Wonderland. Um, and it was looking at um, those fathers and their links to their daughters. And they were sort of meeting like a, a help group, um, like a Fathers Anonymous to talk about their daughters. It was really weird really beautiful. So I'm very interested in that one. So the next one is The Arsonist by Chloe Hooper. This is published on May the 30th. There's quite a few more books I'm going to talk about being published on this date. And this is a non-fiction book. It's true crime. And I'm a bit iffy about true crime um, that focus on like murder or assault because I feel like usually there's a victim who um, hasn't given the okay for these sort of books to be written. Um, but this is focused on a man who um, set a massive fire um, and I believe this is by an Australian author, so it's not a case I knew much about, so I'm interested in finding out more about it. And this is a deep dive into finding out who this man is and why he did it. And last year I listened to An American Fire, on audiobook, and really enjoyed it. And that was um, looking into a spate of um, fires that had been lit in this um, small area by a couple and why they'd done it. And so I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be similar um, 
in the way it's investigated and handled and looking into the person who did it, their history, and also all the local people who were affected. So I'm really excited for this one. This next one I couldn't be more excited for. It's a short story collection. I haven't been reading many short story collections lately, which I've been sad about, but short story collections like this make me want to read loads of them again. This is called Salt Slow by Julia Armfield. So I'm not gonna read you the whole blurb because it's freaking long, but keywords like, these are all focused on women, um, especially their connection with their bodies. Um, this is gothic, fantastical, people like Daisy Johnson have said how amazing it is. There's stories where women turn into insects, men turn into stone, all these things. I'm so excited. Um, I love the title and yeah, I'm just thinking this could be glorious. I think it has quite a um, heavy focus on like myth and um, folk tales and things like that. I, I'm just, yeah, I cannot wait. I'm so, so down for reading this collection. The next one was published in the US last year and I heard loads of rave reviews for it and it's now gonna be published in the UK in May. And that's She Would Be King by Way To Maul. This follows the roots of Liberia. It follows several characters and it's this sort of vast historical novel that also has some magical realism. It sounds absolutely amazing and I know zero about Liberia. I feel like I need to know loads more. So I heard people say this was just an amazing novel. So I'm very excited that it's being published in the UK. The next one, I don't think I have to say much about it other than tell you the title. And that is What My Mother and I Don't Talk About. So this is an essay collection. I think 15 different writers have um, added an essay all about their mother, um, I guess their difficult relationship and the things that they don't talk about. I find these sorts of things absolutely fascinating. I'm one of those people who can be endlessly interested hearing people's family stories. I never find that sort of stuff boring. I'm super nosy. I always want to know how many siblings people have, what their parents are like, what their childhood was like. I just it just endlessly interests me and I am so interested in reading an essay collection that has lots of different voices sort of all commenting on this one facet of family life. So I'm very excited with this one and really looking forward to you know finding new writers possibly who I haven't heard of before and then I can go and see if they have their own essay collections as well. This next one is published in the US by one of my favourite indie publishers Tin House Books and it's called Mostly Dead Things by Kristen Arnett and I love the sound of this one. And this is a blurb written by Karen Russell, who I spoke about earlier. She says, Mostly Dead Things is one of the strangest and funniest and most surprising first novels I've ever read. A love letter to Florida and to family, to half lit swamps and the 7-Eleven and to the beasts that only pretend to hold their poses inside us. In Kristen Arnott's expert hands, taxidermy becomes a language to capture our species' impossible and contradictory desire to be held and to be free. I am so, like, I cannot wait. I feel like this could be similar to Swamplandia by Karen Russell, but also um, the new and improved Romy Futch by Julia Elliott. Like, if it has the sort of tone of those two books, I will love and adore it. So, fingers crossed. Then on June 6th, we have My Name is Monster by Katie Hale. This sounds like it's a post-apocalyptic novel. We follow a character who is in a sort of um, closed down unit and survives this um, big crisis. And when she comes out, she finds herself washed up on the coast of Scotland and she begins a really long walk. And along this walk, she, I don't know if she finds a child or has a child and she becomes a mother. And it says this is inspired by um, Robinson Crusoe and also by Frankenstein. So it sounds like it's gonna be a bit weird. Um, I think it's gonna be really playful with language and themes and I'm intrigued. You know, any book that's post-apocalyptic and also has Scotland in the story, I'm interested. The last one also comes out on May 27th and it's called Rude, There Is No Such Thing As Oversharing by Nimco Ali. This sounds brilliant and I have a feeling that quite a few people on BookTube will be reading this book and talking about it. Here's an example of the topics that will be spoken about. But what do you do when you're living on the streets and on your period? What does it feel like to have a poo after you've given birth? How does your vagina repair after a fourth degree tear? And how do you know if you've ever really orgasmed? We all have questions, but it's not seen as very polite to talk about them. So now this author is. So yeah, I'm very much interested in this. I feel like um, talking about these things is really taboo. Um, and it feels like more and more books are coming out now that really push boundaries, but this one, 
sounds like it's just breaking those boundaries down and it's got amazing reviews saying that it's hilarious so I'm very excited for this one as I am for all of them I've probably said that the whole way through the video so I have no idea how long this will be once I've edited it apologies if it's really really long so yeah those are all the books I'm really excited about in the next few months and yeah it's just it's a really good run i feel like I, I was really excited about all the books that came out in the first quarter of the year but i feel like in this quarter there's loads of books that i feel like i could really love and could end up in my favorite books of the year we shall see so let me know if you have any of these books on your pre-order list and also let me know if there's any books that you are excited about there was i had a much bigger list um I really did it was much bigger but I, I narrowed it down so but there may still be some that I have no idea about and I will love so do please write them all down below for myself and obviously other people can read about them and go and add them to their pre-order list thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye